Chapter 11 Grab them, my children! The witch shouted. Get us out of here! Jack screamed, kicking up from the floor. Go, go, go! Fly! May yelled, pulling up on the broom. Fly, broom! At the princess's command, the broom leapt into the air, just above the first few children that lunged at them, then shot forward like an arrow, straight at the monsters blocking the doorway. Jack ducked his head, and May screamed in terror as they plowed right into the creatures. Claws and teeth ripped at Jack's clothes, and skin as the witch's children grabbed and bit. But the broom never stopped. A second later, they were through the mob of creatures and out into the night sky. A few of the witch's children held on to May, Jack, and the broom. But Jack managed to kick and poke the little monsters off as May angled the broom up into the sky. As the monsters tumbled off the broom, Jack watched them fall. Despite the fact that it was now dark again, how long had he been knocked out? The lights inside the cottage lit up the area around it, giving Jack just enough light to see by. And what he saw made him sick. The entire forest floor, as far as Jack could see, was covered with the witch's children. There must have been hundreds of the tiny swarming monsters, including the ones climbing all over the cottage. The same cottage that just minutes ago Jack had tasted. Jack swallowed hard, pushing down the bile. That teach him to eat candy from strange houses. If we edit found the broom, May said, then stop in mid-sentence. Thankfully. Jack glanced down again, but as they rose, the children quickly blended into the forest floor. Soon, even that was blocked by the trees, the tops of which they quickly rose past. We're a bit high, aren't we? Jack asked, feeling his toes go cold with nothing beneath them. This? They said, looking down, which tipped the broom. Jack tapped on her shoulder more and more urgently until she leaned back. I've been on Rollick House as I have been this. Good to hear, Jack said, fixing his eyes on the horizon, not really caring about her rolling coast or whatever. The moon lit up the cloudless night. Despite its only being half full, and the whole land unfolded before them. If the moon didn't eat soon, it risked fading away completely, but from what Jack had seen, it never learned, disappearing from view at least once a month. Now that he could see where they were, Jack glanced around for any landmarks he might recognize. The forest extended in all directions, and there was no sign of a road or path. Give it up on landmarks. Jack started looking for the nearest farm or town, anything with people who could give them directions. He couldn't find one of those, but he did see the turrets of a castle peeking out above the trees up ahead. The castle meant royalty, but at least the royals wouldn't try to eat them. A low standard, yes, but an important one. See? May said, pointing down as she twisted back to look at him. Now what get an eye? Jack looked where she pointed and almost toppled off the broom. They hadn't stopped rising, and now they were so high 
Jack could barely make out individual trees below them. Broom! Jack yelled, his voice cracking. Stop going up! Go forward! The broom ignored him. Broom! May shouted. Stop rising and fly straight ahead! Instantly, the broom stopped rising and began to inch forward. May turned around and smiled. It likes me better, she said, and the broom purred beneath them. Jack sighed, happy not to be flying any higher. It's probably used to listening to the witch. Maybe you reminded of her. She glared at him. You want me to tell it to drop you? I take it all back, he said quickly, not willing to test if May was joking or not. You're wonderful and beautiful and amazing. That's what I thought, May said and turned back around. Pointed toward that castle over there, Jack said, and she pulled on the handle until they were pointed at the large stone fortress. And just like that, they were off. If by off, one meant moving along at a slug's pace. And not the pace of one of those magic slugs that were larger than a horse with super slick oil that they skated on top of either. Granted, their oil was valuable since it kept metal hinges from sticking, but still. I'm going to give it some gas, May yelled, interrupting Jack's slug oil musings. Before he could wonder what she meant by gas, the princess leaned back to brace herself, an act that almost made Jack lose his balance again. Stay still, he hissed at her, his heart in his throat. I almost fell off. Oh, calm down, she said, reaching an arm behind her to hold on to him. Ready now? Brim, fly forward as fast as you can. Ready? Go! Jack doubled his grip on May, locking his hands around her stomach and his knees around the bottom of the broom. It wasn't enough. The broom bolted forward like lightning, faster than a galloping horse. Faster than a winged horse, even. At that speed, they were going fast enough to pass the castle that had been several days walk away in less than a second. At that speed, they were also going fast enough to send Jack tumbling right off the back of the broom.